please recite a salawat. Respected listeners, my dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our father Ibrahim alayhi salam, this is the topic of this thematic tafsir series that I have chosen for uh, this year in this holy month of Ramadan at this beautiful congregation in Aberdeen. And yesterday was the first lecture of this series during which I talked about one episode from the life of Ibrahim alayhi salam in which he put forth arguments in favor of Tawheed and argued with the people of his uh, nation who worshipped stars and the moon and the sun. And Ibrahim salam said to them, La uhibbul afilin, I do not love those that set because everything is going to set, everything is going to disappear, everything is going to vanish. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the absolute reality who is there since ever and ever and ever and is going to be there forever and ever and ever. So this is the summary of what I discussed yesterday. And also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed the malakut of the heavens and the earth to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, which basically means that he got this conviction, this yaqeen in his heart that everything is in absolute control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the master, the owner of everything. Now this was the brief recap of yesterday's lecture. Now what happened after that? Ibrahim alayhi salam was quite young at that time, still in early adulthood, young man, even a boy or so. And his people, it was in Iraq, Iraq, his, in Babylon, his people not only worship stars and the moon and the sun, but also they worshiped different idols. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, was going to challenge them and fight that idolatry. But before he did that, he had to be properly prepared for that task. And how come I say this? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a hint in the Holy Quran. In verse number 51 of Surah Al-Anbiya that I recited in the opening sermon, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ وَكُنَّا بِهِ عَالِمِينَ Very beautiful verse, deep verse, and it has lessons for us as well, and beautiful and deeper messages. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, before Ibrahim went on to start properly this uh, fight against idolatry, this challenging his people, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدَهُ And certainly we granted Ibrahim his rushd, his rushd, rushdahu, pay very good attention. Very important tafsiri point I'm going to make. We granted him his rushd min qabl before that. Wa kunna bihi alameen. And we were very well aware of it. We knew him very well that he is worthy to receive that rushd. And you might be wondering what is rushd? I deliberately did not translate this rushd into English. There are different words used for it in different English translations, but rushd is a deep concept. Rushd, who his rushd. When we look at different works of tafsir, we learn that rushd means hedayah, guidance, kamal, perfection guidance and perfection. 
His perfection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ رُشْدًا That we granted him perfection, guidance, no. We granted him his rushd, his perfection, the guidance he needed. وَكُنَّ بِهِ عَالِمِينَ And we were fully aware of it, that he was worthy of receiving that. What is his rushd? Allah is telling us, you have your rushd. He has his rushd. Ibrahim has his rushd. According to their own capacities. You have your capacity to receive guidance and perfection. I have my capacity. And we can increase our capacity because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى So if we work more, we can increase our capacity to receive guidance and perfection and kamal and rushd. That is our rushd. For every prophet, there was a rushd. Musa السلام, had his own rushd, rushdahu, to fight the Pharaoh. Isa السلام, had his own rushd. Nuh had his own rushd. And Allah prepared them. For some it took five years, for them it took, for some it took ten years. For the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him his rushd. And how long did it take? We don't really know. He announced it at the age of 40 when he was ready. The work of prophethood he started. But how long did it take? Because he had the biggest capacity to receive that rushd from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. So anyway, Ibrahim alayhi salam received that rushd and Allah says, I knew of his capacity, so I gave him that in pretty young age. And then the next verse tells us, verse number 52, Right after this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا قَالَ لِأَبِيهِ وَقَوْمِهِ He said to his Abu, which is usually translated into English as father. Let's, for simplicity's sake, translate it into English. When Ibrahim said to his father and his nation, مَا هَذِهِ التَّمَاثِيلُ الَّتِي أَنْتُمْ لَهَا عَاكِفُونَ then he had received that rush, that perfection. He was ready. He said to his father, his ab, and his people, What is this tamathil that you, all of you, are consistently showing devotion to them? Tamathil. What is tamathil? Statue. Lifeless statue. He stood up there, Ibrahim alayhi salam. And he said with courage, young man, to his father, guardian, who brought him up, who's in whose house apparently he lived. He said, what is this? Very casually. What, what, what are you doing? And very interesting tafsiri point here. He said, Antum laha aqifun. Did not say ta'kifunaha. In a shorter, quick way, he could have said, Ta'kifunaha. You div so show devotion to them. No. Antum, you, you human beings, you are showing so much devotion consistently to those tamasil, those lifeless statues. Now, I want to stop here and spend a few minutes on abihi because there is a question that is quite often asked was ibrahim salam's father a mushrik because the quran says it qala li abihi he said to his father who was apparently an idolater so was he really his father and the quran tells us that his name was azar it says in another verse, 
when Ibrahim said to his Ab, his father, Azar. So the Sunni school of thought believes that Ibrahim alayhi father was a mushrik and there is no problem in it. Now, the school of thought belonging to the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, we tend to believe that Ibrahim alayhi salam's father, real father, was not mushrik, was not idolater because we have a hadith that none of the four fathers of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam were ever mushrik at any given time in their lives. None of the forefathers. And we know that the great, great grandfather of the Holy Prophet is Ibrahim alayhi salam. So if we accept that his real father was a mushrik, then we would have to let go of this belief that Holy Prophet, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, none of his forefathers were ever mushrik. Now the Quran gives us some clues, some clues that Azar was not really his father, although the apparent meanings of the verses tell us that. For example, the Quran tells us in Surah At-Tawbah, verse number 113, amanu an yastaghfiru lil mushrikeen. It is not uh, good for the prophet and those who believe to pray for istighfar, seek forgiveness for the mushrikeen. And then verse number 114 of Surah At-Tawbah tells us, And that Ibrahim, he did istighfar for his father, but it was only because he had promised it to him. And we learn it in Surah Maryam. In Surah Maryam, Allah tells us that Ibrahim alayhi salam said to his Ab Azar that I will do istighfar for you. Pay very good attention, very good attention. I will do istighfar for you. Let's look at a few verses of Surah Ibrahim. Very important message in there. And then I'll get back to the, the episode when he spoke to his father and the qawm and all those things. So in Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he tells us a dialogue between Azar and Ibrahim alayhi salam. Azar and Ibrahim alayhi salam. When Ibrahim alayhi salam said, I will do istighfar for you. And throughout those verses refers to Azar as Ya Abati, Ya Abati, Ya Abati, which means, O oh Father, O oh Father, O oh Father. But we see that in the last years of Ibrahim alayhi salam's life, he did another prayer in which he said, not Ab, but Walidayya, Rabbi Firli Wali Walidayya. Oh Allah, forgive me and my parents, where he used the word walidiyya. In the last years of his life, when he had spent all his life, and then he couldn't do anything that was forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we make an inference that his real father was someone else, and Abu was used here for uncle, or maternal grandfather. So this is the Shia point of view, that it was not his real father. Anyway, this dialogue between Ibrahim alayhi salam and Azar, and he said to Azar, that why do you worship lima ta'budu ma la yasma'u wa la yubsiru? Why do you worship those things that can't even hear and can't even see and they can't give you any benefit? He said, Ya Abati, Ya Ab, why do you do that? And then the next verse, and then he said, this young Ibrahim stood before Adar, Azar and said, Ya Abati, Inni qad ja'ani min al-ilmi ma lam ya'tika fattabi'ni ahadika siratan sawiyya. And allow me a couple of minutes to unfold this verse because there are deeper lessons for us. He said to Azar, 
Why do you worship all these things? And then he said, Jabati, oh my Ab. Indeed, to me has come from the ilm, knowledge. That has not come to you. Uh, something has come to me from al ilm, al ilm, from the knowledge has come to me. That hasn't come to you. Fattabi'ni. So you follow me. You walk in my footsteps. Ahadika suratan sawiya. I will lead you to the straight path. Here, there is a deep message here. The one who has to be followed, he has to have ilm. He says, something has come to me that hasn't come to you. Fattabi'ni. Therefore, you follow me, walk in my footsteps. Very important point here. Very important point. If someone does not have ilm, you don't have to follow them. If someone has less ilm, you don't have to follow them. If someone has more ilm, you have to follow them. So when the Holy Prophet Sallallahu says, Ana madinatul ilmi wa aliyun babuha He's telling that the Quran has told you in Surah Maryam, the one who has to be followed has to have the ilm. I am the city of ilm. And Ali is the gate to that city. Follow me. And after me, follow Ali. People ask sometimes, where do you get your beliefs from? You are making up your beliefs, Shia. You do all of even people in our own congregation say, where are you getting all these things from? We are getting all these things from the Quran. And Allah says, do tadabbur in the Quran. Allah says, do reflect on the verses of the Quran. He says, Qad ja'ani min al-ilmi. From the al-ilm, which ilm? The ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because all ilm, emanates from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim is saying, some ilm has come, something from al ilm has come to me. Now how does Allah's ilm come to the realm of time space? How does Allah's ilm come here? Or even beyond the time space realm, in the different worlds, the, worlds, the world of jinns, the world of angels, how does this ilm come? Allah's ilm is unlimited. How does it come? You see, Allah has put something as an intermediary, as a sort of a buffer or sort of a place where Allah's ilm's limited reflection has occurred. Pay good attention. Allah's ilm is unlimited. But then there is something called lawh mahfuz, the encrypted disk, which is limited, but it is so big, so vast, that it is an image of Allah's unlimited ilm. Let me give you an example. If we assume that the sky is unlimited, the sky is unlimited, and then we put under the sky, a huge, huge, huge mirror. So that mirror takes the image of the unlimited sky according to its capacity. Now when we look at that mirror, we think, wow, it is so big, it appears almost unlimited. But it is limited. It has just taken the image of some of the image from the, according to its capacity, from the unlimited sky. Lawh mahfuz is like that, the encrypted disk, in which all that ilm that is related to the realm of time space and beyond it, the realm of the jinns, the realm of the angels, the realm of the akhirah, jannah, araf, jahannam, hell, heaven, everything, it has been in that encrypted disk. 
And that disk is sometimes called Al-Kitab, sometimes called kitab mubin sometimes called <laughs> imam mubin And then the Quran tells us, وَقُلْ كَفَا بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ O Prophet, you say, those who doubt your prophethood, say, that Allah is sufficient as my witness, that I am the messenger of Allah, and he is sufficient as my witness, who has the knowledge of the book. Who is that person who is the witness of the Holy Prophet's prophethood, who has the knowledge of the book, the Lawh Mahfuz, Ali ibn Abi Talib. Fattabi'ni Ibrahim salam said, so follow me. So follow the Holy Prophet, and after him, follow Ali ibn Abi Talib, because he has ilm. The Quran is telling us. So Ibrahim salams, let's call him father, Azar, he said, ah, he thought, you have such an audacity. Young man, you stand up to me and say, I follow you. How dare you? Ibrahim salam continued, he said to him, La ta'abudi shaitan. Do not worship shaitan. Of course, he was not worshiping shaitan, but worship means obeying the shaitan by worshiping those idols. And then in the next verse, Ibrahim salam said to him, I am afraid. I, I fear. And 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 Rahman. I fear that Allah's adab will befall you. Don't do this. In the next verse, we learn that Azar said in reply to this, How dare you? He said, Araghibun anta an alihatina ya Ibrahim? Do you take distance? Are you fed up with our gods, O Ibrahim? La illam tantahi la arjumannak. He said, if you do not stop doing this, stop criticizing our gods, I will stone you to death. I will stone you to death, he said. Did this really scare Ibrahim salam off? Of course not. But he understood that, that Azar was really at that moment out of his mind. There was no point continuing that argumentation with him. So he said, Salamun alaik, okay, peace be on you. I don't want to continue arguing with you. At this moment, I have to stop. And then he said, Sa'astaghfiru laka rabbi. Soon I shall do istighfar for you. That was the promise he had done to, to his father or Azar, due to which he said to Allah, Waghfir li, li abi. He said, and please, Forgive my ab or my uncle or Azar because he has been misled. But it was in his early years. It was in his early years. In his last years, he said, Again, after having gone through the whole life, having understood all things, having, having seen and performed so many miracles, he didn't understand that he was not supposed to pray for his father who was mushrik. This is telling us that his real father was someone else who was a monotheist. So these are the clues we get from the Quran, which you have to infer from the verses of the Quran. So then in, uh, when he said to his people, and Ibrahim alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam said to Azar and his people, why do you do this? Ma hadhi tamathilu allati antum laha aqifun. Why do you aqifun? Aqifun means you are in a permanent state of devotion. You are constantly, permanently showing devotion to these tamathi, lifeless objects, statues. What did they say? We have found our forefathers to be worshipping them. Therefore, we worship them. This is the thing. Unfortunately, we see that even in today's world, there are many, many people around the world who just follow the faith 
the ideologies, the religion, the customs, the culture, the, all the bad things that they have inherited from their forefathers blindly. And they don't do any reflection. They don't do any reflection at all. And a couple of years ago, I used this argument in one of my speeches in one of the European countries where I said that the disbelievers used to say, Inna wajadna aba'ana ala millatin. Indeed, we have found our forefathers to be following a certain religion. Therefore, we also follow that religion. And um, I said in that speech that uh, if we also blindly followed the faith of our forefathers, there wouldn't be much difference between them and us. Now, I shared that somewhere, and a gentleman had a good point. He criticized, and he said that, uh, stop uh, propagating dry philosophy, he said, because it is true for those who inherited the wrong faith, but it is not valid for us. Now, the thing is, I can understand his sentiment, because it can hit really hard, especially Shia Muslims who are already accused of uh, being kafir and mushrik by the takfiris. And if I go out and I say, Inna wajadna aba ana ala millatin, we shouldn't blindly follow the faith we have inherited from our parents. So it can be really misunderstood and misconstrued. But the reality is that there is a lesson for us because while our faith, the fundamental beliefs that we have inherited, we have no doubt that they are the truth, the true beliefs, but we have also inherited certain customs and practices and cultures which are supposed to be in the periphery, but we have brought them to the core and are sticking to that and are not willing to do any critical self-reflection and saying, yes, we have to do this because our forefathers in Iran, in Azerbaijan, in Hindustan, in Pakistan, in Iraq used to do this. So we have to do it exactly that way. And I have seen that we have certain customs and cultures that have nothing to do with Sharia. They are not even mustahab, but they have been turned into very, very much mustahab. Things that happen on Nauruz, things that happen on the Niyaz of Kunda, and all these things, which are good things. You can do them with reja, with the hope that Allah will give you sawab but we have turned certain things into really highly recommended mustahab because our forefathers used to do that. So we have to do some critical self-reflection always, always. And when we do some critical self-reflection even on our fundamental beliefs, it is only gonna increase the conviction in our hearts about the wilaya of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad alayhi salam inshallah. <clears throat> Inshallah, we'll continue uh, this uh, series tomorrow. And uh, until then, take a very good care of yourselves. Have a great day tomorrow. And Inshallah, see you tomorrow. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.